None of us could have anticipated the impact of COVID-19 on a global scale. Uh, we've all had our lives flipped upside down in the past month. And here to share their experiences are Bo Lucknowski. Hey, Robbie, how are you? All things considered, I'm doing well. Thanks, Bo. Bo is the owner, the founder of Ameridroid. They're one of the world's most well-respected vendors of single board computers and other maker tech. Yep. So, so this is where I'm sitting. Yeah. Just in the middle of the inventory area. Cool. My next guest is community ambassador and co-producer of Seth McFarland's The Orville, Tom Costantino. How's it going? Hanging in, my friend. Along with Tom, I'm also thrilled to have visual effects supervisor on The Orville, Brandon Fayette, joining us. Thanks for having us. Next in line is our very own world-famous co-host on Category 5 Technology TV, adored by all, it's Sasha Rickman. Hello. And finally, cosplay engineer, woman who can start her Tesla by waving her hand, and most recently, a contestant on Fox's new TV series, Lego Masters, with Will Arnett. It's Amy Double D. Hello, Robbie. Hi, Amy. Great to see you again. Now, since I work in IT and we're considered essential, I still have to go to work every single day. But like you, I've been very careful to practice social distancing. And for the most part, I'm interacting with nobody but my immediate family, except if I'm separated by a couple of meters or more. My wife and three kids are at home, and I'm actually kind of feeling a bit envious of those dads who are able to stay home with their families right now. Just going to be honest. But I know it's not easy for folks. Um, we all have our own challenges. Sasha, um, you and your husband, Dave, are you guys hanging in? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah good, good. we are all of the above uh, doing what it takes, you know, staying isolated mm -hmm. and, you know, just keeping ourselves entertained and prepping for the move. <laughs> we're, we're good. Bo, how are you doing? You and your family healthy and safe? Oh, yeah, we're all healthy. Good. There, there's a theory that we in California have already all had it. Amy, how have things been for you? Quarantine life, uh, transition to working from home. Yeah. Um, I work from home most of the time and I'm home on the weekend. So not too much of that has changed for me. Mm -hmm. uh, I do feel like I'm living in a fishbowl. <laughs> it's like I wake up in the morning, work out, and then I'm like, well, I could go outside today, but I don't need to. So it's it's yeah. an interesting um, mind. It's more of the mind, at least for me, because I'm very much home all the time. Um, so it's just been a very different, I guess, stay away from the news. How is it that Lego Masters was able to air during the pandemic? Uh, so Lego Masters, we filmed from October to December. So we had wrapped filming in December, oh, okay. and then the premiere date was in February. Yeah. And then I guess the last episode was just this week. Right. So it's been interesting doing interviews because everything now has been digital interviews. Um, <laughs> and I had to do an interview for the Dallas Morning News. They're not allowed to come in my house. So it's like one of those where I just had to open the front door and they had to take my picture standing outside. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, this is... This is my life now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's kind of mind blowing how things have changed in just a month. Um, thinking of, I mean, at the start of March, I announced to viewers that we were going to be moving our studio at the end of the month. But by the time that we got things rolling on lease arrangements and the insurance that I need for a new place, COVID-19 was in full swing. Um, so our insurance brokerage closed, uh, the property manager's office. I wasn't sure if I could get a hold of them. Uh, I was actually, honestly, I was getting worried that, uh, you know, perhaps I wouldn't be able to rent a truck for the move or even secure a unit in time. Um, but I absolutely had to be out of our old space by April 1st. Um, I think it's fair to say that most, if not all of us, were caught off guard. Um, let's start with Brandon. Um where were you and the team at the Orville uh, as like, where were you at as far as production goes? I know you were working on season three when all this went down. Sure. I mean, I, we had, we had filmed uh, a good portion of the first uh, chunk of episodes of the season. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the way we typically work is our previous team for visual effects is kind of a couple. So, you know, did we, we haven't released how many episodes we're doing this season publicly. Have we Tom? No, we have. It's 11. 
so far okay. for today. Yeah. A so we ones. we had things all the way up to episode five and some of some like one off scenes shot. And, you know, we're in previous right now in episode 10. So, uh, you know, I mean, we were we were in a pretty good swing footage wise, I think, when this struck. Good, good. And, uh, you know, now we're working from home trying to complete kind of the previsualization of all of the effect scenes and then move into mm -hmm doing the uh, editorial for what we have in the can, trying to kind of just get shots ready, get stuff delivered to our VFX vendors so we can start actually creating, you know, the path towards final, you know, visual effects, which wow. mm -hmm. this time is kind of letting us do, which is pretty good. Yeah, we're just trying to get as much work done as we can because, um, you know, it could be a long, cold summer. Were you guys ready for this? Like... Um, how much time did you have to transition from the Fox lot to home-based editing? We had about a day on my end to kind of prep. We knew that we were going to shut down on a Friday. So we kind of synced up as you know many drives as we could. You know, We have to do everything through the uh, Disney security standards. So we had to kind of mm. go through making sure everything right, was right. You know, appropriately kind of locked down. You know, everybody's yeah. place. You know, as much as you can do in the midst of a crisis. But we, we managed to do pretty good. I was going to give kudos to my wife. She was a little ahead of the curve because she knew this was coming. So mm -hmm. we were, uh, I was able to secure, well, I mean, ask forgiveness for with content security <laughs> to get some footage going. Um, but, you know, yeah, I mean, were we, were we ready to go from zero, 100 to zero? I mean, no, no, I don't think anybody was. I mean, I think we had a week ramp up time to try to get everything kind of moving. And then once we were up and running, it was... You know, production virtually is a little bit stilted, but we're moving at a pretty good clip now. I think we've kind of gotten into swing things. Cool. Sasha, how about you? Um, as a personal support worker, uh, you care for elder, elderly folks, and uh, I, I imagine that this would be a very difficult time. Um, what, throughout this entire the pandemic, what has caught you off guard? I was used to... The assumption that the clients I saw would be my biggest risk. You know, there's always risk of injury, like back injuries, slips and falls. As right. soon as the pandemic hit, it was the realization that I, as an outsider coming into people's homes, now I was the risk to them. Uh, that was that was the biggest thing that caught me off guard was <laughs> the fact that all of a sudden I felt like at any point in any interaction with any one person, I could unknowingly be getting them sick. And so I, I mean, I already am a very careful person, but I went into like overdrive. And if there is a rule to be followed, I am following it. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was the thing. That was the biggest thing that really hit me with the pandemic, I would say. Well, what about you guys? Uh, what were you in the midst of at Ameridroid? Uh, we were in the process of scheduling appointments to go visit uh, clients in the California Bay Area, okay, the Silicon Valley and San Francisco area, mm -hmm. and we had to put that on hold, obviously, for <laughs> for social distancing reasons. <laughs> and with Ameridroid being a tech company, do you feel that that kind of better prepared you to suddenly have to move staff to a home-based work scenario? Well, we are uh, very much a paperless operation mm -hmm. we uh, almost all of our stuff is already done digitally good good um we have uh, network staff so we do things like um vpns and mm -hmm. all that type of stuff to get into the business anyway mm -hmm. so uh, remote desktop and and uh virtual machines and stuff like that so it hasn't really changed a whole lot for us because we were already kind of prepared to do this Right, right. And okay. uh, we do a lot of work on, you know, instead of on paper, we do it on tablets and on, on the screen. <laughs> Amy, how about you? How have your plans been impacted? Yeah, so I was supposed to go to a, a, a hacker event in Serbia, and oh, uh, we wow. were planning to fly into Budapest and then take the train down to Serbia and have, like, a, a hacker thing on the train with some friends. Mm -hmm. So that is um, postponed with, no like, no date. Uh, I go to DEF CON in August. I go to Dragon Con, which is also in August. And uh, that may seem it's like enough time ways away, but it's, I mean, it's really not. I don't foresee like too many 
even if they do reinstate it, how many people are going to be going to these things? Because right. fear is a very strong motivator yeah. for a lot of people. And uh, the fear of the unknown and the the internet is this epitome of misinformation. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, are you going to be going to an event? And if you are, now people aren't going to be hugging or the interactions are not going to be the same or how people spend money in the future is going to be very different. Mm-hmm. I, I think this will be an interesting wake up call for some of the younger generations that haven't saved, you know, their six months of savings or their a thousand dollar emergency funds or however they handle like the financial crisis situation. And that just adds to like another stress level. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's interesting because it's how can, how can we give back when we can't even like some people can't even help themselves or you feel you can't, help like with interaction. And I will say like working on some side projects or just building things. Sometimes I, I feel guilty about sharing like stuff I'm making or working on. I feel guilty for being happy. Um, we actually had a hangout call the other day with a bunch of people from the Lego masters and we all just like had a hangout call and we were just like building. We had we, there's not, nothing planned to build, but everyone we were just building with something with Lego and all just hanging out on a live call. And mm-hmm. it was, it just felt that that felt normal um, to be doing something that you're already familiar with. Yeah. So change is hard, right? So um, it's, you're out of your comfort zone for a lot of most, a lot of people are out of their comfort zone for that. But yeah, I guess we've got an infinite supply of Lego for now. <laughs> <laughs> Comes with the territory, I guess. Now, while I was really fortunate to have some friends help out with the move itself, for me, it's been really tough juggling the studio move and setting things up and being ready to broadcast tonight uh, since social distancing says that I can't have anyone else here to help me out. Um, We also had to postpone the construction um, so I don't have a stage or even a desk in front of me. Um, I've had to drill a hole through the studio wall as a temporary way to get the signal from the camera into the production room, which is actually a separate room. So I I think, you know, while my scenario is not terrible, uh, we're all having to kind of figure out innovative ways to keep doing what we do. Uh, I'll start with Tom. What about you? Um, What's it been like to have to move to a home-based production studio? I hate not seeing everyone and also trying to work with the boss from, you know, we're, you know, seven miles away from each other and it's, you know, presents some technical challenges and, um, yeah, I mean, Brandon can answer too. It's, you know, I mean, l- luckily we do a lot of stuff on computers mm-hmm. and we, we're all pretty good about, uh, you know, keeping up with each other, but you know, this nothing replaces all of us being in a, in an office together. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I miss, I miss seeing, I miss seeing everybody's faces for sure. But, you know, we lucked out that we live in an area of the country that has fast enough internet that we can do, remote workstation and yeah, you know, true. quite a lot of other, you know, little tricks to kind of make sure that we can keep moving forward and mm-hmm. feel at least kind of like we're in the office, even though we don't really see each other except over camera like this. Yeah. I mean, we're definitely working. <laughs> it's good. I mean, it won't be forever. We're, you know, we're going to run out of work. I mean, VFX can go a little longer if we can work that out financially, but, you know, we're now we're gonna we're gonna run the pipeline until we run out of material. Once we have, you know, all of the edits delivered by you guys, I mean, we've got a lot of work. The show's really visual effects heavy, so I mean, we've got thousands of shots already that we can start kind of putting in production just with what you guys have done for the past few weeks. So you know, that has to get sculpted, animated, you know, ingested into vendor systems, you know, and then we start bringing it to life shot by shot. So it's We've got, a lot, we've got a lot to do, fortunately. Yeah, I, I can't imagine. Um, Tom, you, uh, you also said that um, you'll eventually run out of work. Um, I can only hope that by the time you get to that point, we're going to be through this. Uh, but I guess some viewers, and certainly myself, are wondering right now, do you have any projections at this point as to you know, when the uh, third season of The Orville is going to be available? Um, I, I'm not at liberty to say, cause I don't know. I, 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 I think this is going to affect all production. We will all be in the same boat 
Mm. Um, so uh, without without quoting me, and I mean, I, yeah, I, I can't see how all of television and film isn't delayed by this. Um, you know, what people aren't realizing is we have to now figure out how you go back and put 100 to 200 people in a wood box and film together when right. there's, you know, when we don't have a vaccine or a treatment yet. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we got some plannings to do. Yeah, we, sure do. we mean the higher ups than us. Right, right. Mm -hmm. That's an honest answer. Yeah. Sasha, how, how have you and Dave been impacted? So with the pandemic happening, we made the very important decision to be closer to Dave's dad sooner rather than later. Um, and we moved up our move our move to Newfoundland by a few months. Um, and so mm -hmm. we're packing up and leaving and going in the midst of a pandemic, right. which is an interesting kind of, it's a challenge because you, we have to abide by social isolation and physical distancing, even mm -hmm. during, you know, a very big, like multi-day move where we have to take into account the fact that we can't go anywhere for food, yeah. you know, that sort of thing. When we get to the, um, when we get to the house, we get home, we're not allowed off the property for 14 days. It's, <sighs> it's legally, you know, mandated quarantine, which we happily will abide by, mm -hmm. but it does mean that we've had to make, um, make arrangements that there's going to be food there for us, <laughs> you know, that, you know, that sort of thing that you don't even, you would never think that free movement in your own country would be something that you would have to really yeah. think about. Bo, how have you been impacted at Ameridroid? There, there are people that are working from home now. Most, most people mm -hmm. here are working from home at the moment. Okay. <laughs> Um, but our shipping staff is still coming in and, and they're still shipping Yeah, and everybody's doing the social distancing thing. Good, good. We have a fair amount of room here, so it's easy to keep, keep our distance. Mm -hmm. But, um, in our, in our county right now, there's only one confirmed case and it's, a uh, somebody who's on parole. So, or on probation, I guess. And so they're under house arrest right now anyway so <laughs> just like the rest of us Bo. amy how about you mm, so i have pretty much a full makerspace shop in my house so that hasn't changed too much i have the access to 3d printers laser cutter <laughs> i have a five axis cnc machine i oh, have cool. like i have all the tools to do stuff here yeah, yeah um at this point i think it's just as i always say i have this little this little lego thing it says head case. All right. <laughs> because at some point I'm always worried about time for finishing a project or for a certain event or a certain con. And now it's like, I have this abundance of time. What can I be doing with this extra mm -hmm. time? I'm now, I'm not commuting an hour to work and an hour from work. Right. And I mean, reality is everyone has the same hours in the day as everyone else. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when people are, what's the motivation to get out of bed in the morning? Um, mm -hmm. For me, I've been making myself work out every day. So when people are stumbling out of bed when it's still dark outside, I've already I've already worked out for the day. I've already tried to make the best of it. That's a good idea. How do you stick to it? I am I am you make a habit, you make a discipline. You dis and discipline not as in a punishment, and discipline as in you can do this, you're you know, you're worth it. So every day, so I think today is like my 24th day that I've worked out or something, but like, at like the fifth day, I'm like, this sucks. I don't want to do it. <laughs> right. Um, but that discipline has like, I'm like, come change so much of just how my day has been. I'm like, mm. all right, I'm waking up at the same time every morning, even on the weekend when I don't have to work, because if not, then I just get in this slump and I'm like, now I'm just watching useless stuff on TV, net, something that is not furthering or pushing myself. Like I could stay home anytime and watch Netflix. Like why? Um, not that I still, I got some Netflix shows I like, so <laughs> but no, no judgment on that. Um, it's, I think it's going to change to the future of any like companies or places that say, Hey, you can't work from home. And now all these yeah. companies in these roles are positioned to that. Right. Um, 
also all the wonderful parents that are also learning how to balance homeschooling and uh, and working. Bless those people. Yeah, I, I think it's been a different challenge for each of us. You know, I, I think like, I'm trying to think how many days it's been. My biggest challenge is um, my dad is older, so mm -hmm. trying to not, you know, like if I have to be around him or, you know, go get his groceries, like yeah. not being able to give those people a hug has been like yeah. hard for me, I think. Mm -hmm. um, also, like not the fear of the unknown. The fear of the unknown is probably one of the hardest things is I'm I'm planning to go to these two conferences at the end of the year. So I'm trying to plan to work on these projects and have these things finished on time. So now where's the motivation to finish those? Why should I finish those? Um, and that's the next steps. Like, okay, what if this is the new norm now? Now we're not going to be having these events. Am I making my projects for myself or other people? Am I making it like, it's kind of, sorry. <laughs> Puppy's thirsty. Indiana Jones. My bad. No worries. Um, you were saying that uh, you were considering whether uh, you were making your projects for yourself or for others. Yeah, but it's kind of made me think it's like, why do we do the things that we do? Do we do them for acceptance of other people? Or are we doing them for us? Or are we doing them to learn? And I think I've kind of been honing on like, improving some projects I've already worked on. And I was like, so I'm not going to go back and work on that. It's fine. And you know, when <laughs> fine is just not okay. So I've been going back and kind of improving on some of those. And I have the time to do it. So that's right. been a, yeah. I guess, an interesting balance. Yeah, that's good. Sasha, um, what's been the hardest for you? I think the uncertainty day to day, the fact waking up, not, not knowing what's happening the next day, um, has been difficult. And, um, I would say for me personally, my biggest challenge has been, I have a tendency to lean towards like the bright side of everything, as you mm -hmm. may know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and although, I mean, it's so good to see all of, all of the humanitarian efforts and all of the good that's coming out of this pandemic, there's a real sad side of it. And for me, it's coming to terms with like the actual fact of the tragedy. And um, it's been a very big challenge for me to balance that, mm. I think, because I, I have found myself, you know, being one of maybe many who end up glued to the TV and they're watching stats and they're watching, you know, it's, it's real lives being affected. Yeah. But at some point I had to teach myself, okay, I need to turn it off and just tune in, you know, to something something good light <laughs> yeah <and happy. laughs> mm -hmm. so that's been our biggest challenge is just learning to filter through when it's appropriate to be a part of the the news and when it's not <laughs> amy how about you i had my grandmother died um last oh, like two weeks ago i'm so, so sorry like, that i never thought i would be asking like to do a private live streaming of a funeral. Hmm. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we live in weird times and, you know, so a lot of family members couldn't be there for the funeral. And yeah. I was trying oh, to my. put it in a way to my dad as it's not as a disrespectful thing to do this for your mother, our grandmother. Um, my brother put it as a good point. He said, um, we have these amazing technology tools to connect us. So even if we can't physically be there, mm -hmm. like we can be there virtually and people didn't used to have that, that chance or that experience. And though it is uh, bizarre, I guess you would say to live stream a private funeral. I know the people that couldn't be there were very grateful that they could at least, I guess, honor or put their respect towards it. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's it's definitely living in a weird time. Yeah. Uh, Sasha, besides the move itself, uh, what kind of changes has the pandemic brought about for you? So it, this is actually really quite the interesting experience 
almost experiments in the fact that we were between studios and then we were in a pandemic <laughs> yeah, really. and we have to be physically distant yeah. because now as a part of the show, in order to maintain, you know, the connections I've made, I am going to turn <laughs> a part of the house into a studio. Awesome. And so I'll be able to connect remotely just as mm -hmm. we're doing now. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it'll be a different time zone, which I understand <laughs> that, you get, that I'll have to get accustomed to. I think I end up, I end up airing an hour and a half later than you. In the future? <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> but yeah, I'll be, I'll still be part of the show. I'll just be very physically distant. <laughs> Amy, how have you had to adapt? I have found that I've had to become more resourceful. So for example, I was trying to design some like new circuit board components and uh -huh. I need some parts that I don't have and I have to order. Well, now they're not available or right. you know, they're not, I can't yep. get them. So I'm like, okay, I have to use what I have in my house. I feel like I'm like at this <laughs> like, summer camp of, you know, yeah. you have these five things and you have to make this and you have an hour. I feel like I'm back on the Lego master show is what it's like. <laughs> yeah. That's what it, the, the countdown clock is on. But I feel that um, I've started to become more creative and or really understand the parts that I do have or take things apart. But as far as technology, I think having the internet has, the internet connects us. <laughs> but um, I even did like the, the Netflix watch party and I've never done that before where you watch movies with your friends. And I'm like, why, that's weird. I just watch movies by myself anyways. But it was actually really fun because we had six of us in the room and normally when you go to a okay. movie, you're sitting next to the person or you're in the dark, so you don't ever get to see. Mm -hmm. And it was actually probably more fun to watch my friend's facial expressions because some of them had never oh. seen, you know, like some of these like old school movies or Star Wars mm -hmm. or Indiana Jones. And you're just like, wait a minute. <laughs> or when they like, they make the connection. So to watch their facial expressions, like taking someone to Disney World for the first time, it's almost just as fun to like watch them. That's such a fun idea. Now, this is a terrible time for many, and, and some of you that are watching at home may have lost a loved one, or some of you are scared or coping with loneliness or worry. Um, I want you to remember that you're not alone through this. Uh, we're all experiencing this differently, but we're all in this together. Tom, your thoughts? Uh, you know, I'm going to quote my great-grandmother-in-law, who's who's no longer with us, but was very wise. And she always would say this too shall pass. And she's been through like three world wars and, uh, you know, uh, trying to think about all the, all the myriad of things. I think she was even around for the early part of the great depression. So, you know, um, it, it seems bad right now and it's going to be rough, but humans are resilient and, you know, maybe in a year, year and a half, it'll just be that, Ha ha! Funny thing. Well, for the rest of us, lucky to stay healthy. Ha ha! Funny thing. We, hey, remember that time we all were stuck in our houses for months on end. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully, you know. Yeah. But I do think the human race is very resilient. I think you know, like I said, it's almost like buying a house. If you were lucky enough to do so, it's horrible trying to do it, and then when then you don't remember any of it except for the house when it's over with. So, yeah. you know, I think I think we'll all be okay eventually. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, I, I hear you. Um, it actually reminds me, my wife and I were just going through some old photos uh, from a couple years back, just uh, this past weekend. Um, we'd taken the kids up to the cottage um, for Canada Day's fireworks. So we sat on the beach of West Guilford, and as the sun went down, we got eaten alive by mosquitoes. It was terrible. But as we looked at the photos, my wife actually remarked, in looking at the pictures, all you see is the good part of the memories. You forget about the insects, the discomfort, and how terrible it was at the time. We made it through, and now all we have is the fond memory. And I'm, I'm really hoping that we're going to see the same in this situation. Sasha, final words? This will pass. We will be okay. And we're with you every step of the way. This world is is small. We are your neighbors. We, I mean, if anything that, um, 
that this pandemic has shown us is how just even one kind word to another person can really make a difference. And yeah, I just want to say we're in this together and we are here for you. I am here for you. I'll just be here in Newfoundland. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, my friend. Amy, what would you say is important for each of us to keep in mind? I think it's, it's okay to laugh still. And um, I think that's what people are sometimes afraid of right now is like, I feel guilty for having fun and fun doesn't have to mean you're irresponsible and you're, you know, you're going outside with like 20 people and you're right. right. I mean, fun can be like, we were, you know, you get together with your friends and you do a live stream and you put together stuff so you can, you can laugh. So after you can still have some future, um, Yeah. I don't have, I don't have the right answer for that. And I don't, anyone that says they have the right answer doesn't know themselves. Um, there's too many unknowns, but yeah. support, like you're not alone. Like that, that's the best part. You're, you're not alone, but we also have the tools to connect or Maybe you know someone who can't afford a laptop. Maybe you can, you know, donate for some, you know, people to get laptops or cell phones, something to have someone to help them stay in touch. Because those are things I, I don't think about. And I know some of the school districts that are teaching, you know, the kids are from home. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm like, oh, do they provide laptops for those kids? And um, I know a lot of the schools don't. So that's, that's also a financial yeah, you're right. Um, I've been fortunate personally that with all uh, with all three of my kids at home, um, I've been able to give them each an old computer. But sadly, um, <laughs> and I kind of feel bad about this, but I, honestly, Amy, I never really thought about how others may not have access to to an old computer, for example. Um, so I think that's a really great idea. Thanks, Amy. Um, Bo, speaking to those who are struggling right now, what would you like them to know? Yeah, that's that's hard. You know, life can be really difficult, um, and we've come through quite a few challenges since the turn of the century, haven't we? With uh, terrorist attacks and the uh, housing crisis in the uh, late two thousand, like two thousand eight, and and um, after that, we had the recession and um and you know just their ongoing actions in the middle east and i don't know just there's been a lot of stuff going on in life and you know i from a technology standpoint there's not really a whole lot we can do other than you know prepare to work from home to you know we raised our children in a homeschool environment so so as far our children are already out of that past that. So it would not have made much difference for us from a schooling perspective, but I can see how for a lot of people it's, it's making a huge difference. And uh, I'm hoping that it gives people more time with their children really um, as they, as they prepare to school from home Mm -hmm. and uh, as they work from home as well, of course that can be challenging to segment work and school yeah, or work, true in, enough. You know, work in family life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but as far as people who are suffering, uh, that's, uh, I wish I had some magic words to say for those people other than, um, you know, grow in, in your, in your uh, faith and, you know, rely on a higher power because, you know, we as humans can only do so much. Thanks, Bo. Brandon, some final thoughts? I think right now there are people that are fortunate to be able to work like we are. And, you know, for as long as we have, that that's a blessing. And I think for those that are struggling right now, you know, the world has gotten through recessions. The world has gotten through wars. Uh, people yeah. are very good at adapting and picking up and moving forward. There's going to be a light at the end of this tunnel. There, there always is. I mean, you know, we as a society and as a planet, you know, can get through things and bounce back even stronger. And I think that there's going to be a lot of positive that comes out of this that uh, we didn't really see before. And uh, I'd say for everybody, you know, find a thing to keep you happy, find a new hobby, spend some time 
doing something you haven't done before. Find, find one great thing in a day to, you know, keep you motivated, you know, create something you've never created. You know, it's, it's a time to explore things. It's a time to say, you know, Hey, for those who have family, you know, this is time you're never going to get again like this, you know, take photos of your kids, have these memories, you know, they won't remember it, but you will. And you can show them later what this was like. I mean, yeah. this is, it's a milestone event for the world. And I think we need to uh, just recognize that in the midst of all the negative that's surrounding us, there's definitely positive that will come out. Thanks so much, everyone. I appreciate those words so very much. From all of us, we wish you, your families, health and comfort throughout this time. Stay safe. Thank you.